I remember this incident vividly. I had just finished my engineering and we were all at my home. I guess we had switched on some heavy electrical appliances and probably the load was too high and the fuse wire burnt out. I was thinking what to do and my mother comes and says, call the electrical engineer and get this switched. I told her, Amma, I am an engineer too, let me try. She calmly replies, I know you are an engineer, an engineering graduate, but now we need an engineer who can do things, who can fix things. Well, that got me thinking. It's a huge difference between an engineer and an engineering graduate. Who is an engineer? The word engineer, Latin word engineator, is derived from two Latin words, engineer, which means to create, to generate, to devise, and ingenium, meaning cleverness. So an engineer is one who invents, who designs, who analyzes, who builds and tests missions and complex systems. Simply put, engineering is all about designing the human-made world. While the word engineering may be in vogue for the last 500 to 600 years, I think the trait of being an engineer or the spirit of engineering has always been with us. It has been with us ever since the human race made its appearance on the planet. Don't you all agree? I told you engineering means cleverness. Well, all of us believe we are clever and we would like to believe we were all clever from the day we were born. Check this out. One of the earliest engineering creation is the simple wheel. The oldest wheel found in the archaeological excavations in Mesopotamia is believed to be more than 4,000 years old. It was not used for transportation, it was a simple potter's wheel, but see from there how long we have come. The simple potter's wheel evolved and today we are touched by a wheel multiple times in a day. The bicycles, the motor cars, the complex gear systems in the machinery around us or even the minute gears on your watch, it all started with that simple wheel. Or take for that matter the Roman aqueducts. This was in 300 BC when the Romans used aqueducts to bring water from outside sources into cities and towns. They moved water just through gravity along a slight overall downward gradient with, within conduits of stone, brick or concrete. And many cases, these conduits were buried beneath the ground, they followed the contours of the terrain or when peaks came in, they were just tunneled through. So what is engineering all about? I have a very simple definition. Just visualize a square and on the four corners, let's place society, nature, science, and technology. Society has a lot of needs, a lot of problems to be solved. Nature has resources. Science has theories and concepts. Technology has tools. And engineering is right at the center of the square. Engineering is all about leveraging science, technology, and the natural resources to solve the needs of the problems of the society. Clearly, engineering is all about unleashing human creativity. And this human creativity is the foundation for critical thinking and problem solving skills, which is most sought after in today's complex world. But let's get back to the story that I started with. How do we ensure our kids are engineers and not just engineering graduates? How do we spot and nurture this human creativity, the engineering spirit among our budding engineers? As part of a study from our Shape It Foundation, we saw that there were amazing work done by young minds across the campuses in the country. 
and there was a pattern on the way human creativity was kindled and we call it SPOT, a simple acronym by which you can spot and nurture the engineering spirit and human creativity in young minds. How to spot? S for synthesis, P for pinch, O for observation and T for tinkering. Synthesis it refers to the combination of components or elements to form a connected whole. In the bachelor's program of engineering in India, the students are exposed to a wide variety of topics. And we saw that when students try to synthesize what they have learned and try to develop a system, assemble their learning together, the human creativity is unleashed. This is a story uh, from Udaipur, known as the city of lakes. A group of three computer science students were fascinated by what they were learning, the internet of things, the sensors, the big data and cloud. They tried to synthesize their learning to develop a lake monitoring system. They studied the sensors that could be used to monitor the lake water on various parameters like turbidity, temperature, pH value, water level and the dissolved oxygen. Once they got the hang of the sensors, they built the necessary circuitry to connect with the Arduino board, the power supply units, the solar panels, and they also designed waterproof cases for the sensors so that they can get them deep into the water. And they built the software required to monitor the data 24 by 7 and then push the data to the cloud and develop beautiful dashboards which can be accessed by public and government authorities to monitor the water quality in the lakes. They installed this in the Fateh Sagar Lake in Udaipur. What followed is history. The project went on to win the best student project at the International Hack Contest organized by Intel Corporation. And the students were offered a prize money of $6,000. And as a nice gesture, the students offered the prize money to develop six more such systems to be installed in other six lakes of Udaipur. Very inspiring on how students synthesize their learning and how the creativity was unleashed. Let me tell you another story. This is again related to water body and in this case it is the temple tank. Mahamaham is a Hindu festival celebrated every 12 years in the Mahamaham tank located in the South Indian town of Kumbakonam. Hindus believe that all the holy rivers of India converge in the tank on this day. A purificatory bath in this tank on this day is considered holy and sacred and more than a million people congregate for the occasion. A million people congregating in a small tank which covers an area of six acres is a nightmare for the district administration. So when the administration wanted to leverage the technology for crowd monitoring, there was a group of budding engineers guided by the professor of course implemented an image processing and video analytics algorithm for crowd counting. The team studied the terrain, they studied the area, they established a base station and installed ultra high definition cameras at the various entry and the exit points to monitor the crowd movement and assisted by live video streaming. The team developed an image processing and video analytics algorithm that provided a real time count of the number of people inside the tank by the minute. The team estimated that the tank could hold a maximum capacity of about 78,000 people. At any given point of time, up to 64,000 people could stand in the tank. And working with the police uh, department, the team established the safe capacity in the tank as 45,000 people. And every minute, this was tracked. And during the auspicious time of the dip on the 10th day of the festival, the minute-by-minute minute tracking of the population inside the tank really helped. It was more than 1.4 million people who took the holy dip on the last day and thanks to the real-time alerts, the district administration intervened, controlled the crowd and it was a sigh of relief for everyone to see such an event of mammoth scale pass out without any casualty. The students were thrilled to see how their learning of image processing and hands-on video analytics was put to use. So the story is, when you synthesize your learning and put it to practice, for sure, 
human creativity unfolds. That's the S in spot. The second way by which human creativity comes to the fore is when you feel the pinch, when you feel the pain, when you have a problem and you try to solve it with all the learning that you have had. This year, a group of young girls in their first year engineering came together with an innovative idea for dysmenorrhea or the painful periods. The group aptly named themselves Loven Women. Loven, a Cornish word meaning joyful. The team delved into an issue of concern faced by 10 out of 100 women in this country, the menstrual pain which leaves a profound negative impact on the lives of these women. After a structured design thinking exercise and meeting with medical professionals, the team came up with the idea of a dysmenorrhea massager belt to ease the pain through a heating mechanism. With the help of massager, the team hopes to lessen the burden of menstrual pain and help reduce the increasing impact of periods on women's daily life. As I speak now, the team has received the seed funding and the idea has moved from prototype to testing phase and the students are confident of getting their product to the market very shortly. That's an amazing work by these young girls when they try to come up with an innovation to alleviate their pain. But let me tell you another story. Just to be fair to the young boys in the audience, boys are good in innovation too. This is a problem that every hostel student faces, which is washing clothes. And three students came up with what could be the best solution. They came up with a pedal powered washing machine. The product was Waiki or the wash bike. Powered by the mechanical strength of the user, the product ensures not just a good exercise for the person, but also uses 60% lesser water when compared to the conventional washing machines. Waiki is cheaper to build and study to use. One total wash in Waiki takes about 20 minutes and that includes washing with soap and water. Waiki has a horizontal axis rotary drum and that is specifically designed to reduce the material weight and cost which makes it easy for replacement and maintenance. Another highlight of the product is that one can see the whole washing process through a transparent outer body material. The material provides the user a control over the time factor the damage and makes washing more interesting. They say every problem is an opportunity and be it the story of the massager belt or the Waiki wash bike, clearly these were problems that were converted to an opportunity by young creative minds. And that's P for you, pinch. The third situation where human creativity comes to the fore is through observation. Observation is an act or an instance of noticing or perceiving. And when we keenly observe and connect the dots, we spot an opportunity that kindles the creativity in us. This is the story of a group of students in their first year in engineering college. They were fascinated by the hands-on experience they could get, observe the various electronic hardware and software components. They were recalling how difficult it was to comprehend these concepts that they just learned by rote in their high school days because they had very limited exposure or opportunity to get hands-on on these electronic devices. They quickly connected the dots and wondered how nice it would be if they could take this experience of getting hands-on to the school children. If only they can overcome the drawbacks of the traditional programming hardware kit by providing easy to understand programming and interfacing environment for the kids to explore and innovate. The result was Dream Kit, a kit complete with basic electronic plug and play components complemented with an ever-growing library of building blocks that snap to each other with a single wire and can be coded in simple English. Literally, this kit with various plug and play modules like a distance sensor, a motor module, a button, light sensor, buzzer, has made electronics a child's play. That's O, observation. The last and the most frequent way by which human creativity is unleashed is tinkering. Tinkering is an attempt to repair or improve something in a very casual way. To simply put in local terms, it is jugad. 
right? It is non-conventional, it is frugal innovation, it's a hack. It could be an innovative fix or a simple workaround or a solution that bends the rules. This story I'm sharing is very current and is happening right now around us. We are still in the grip of COVID pandemic and as the COVID impacted patient cases increased, we had very high demand for ventilators. One of the technology incubators in an engineering campus came up with a jugad, if I can say a quick, effective and frugal innovation of ventilator splits made out of 3D printing. The design involves a two-part separation tube in the form of a Y to provide four people with artificial respiration. Since it is made of 3D printing, it can be easily created and they shared the design as well with others to help in managing the COVID crisis. And another jugad uh, that came from the same incubator was that they had an agreed drone that they had developed primarily for spraying pesticides. In response to the COVID, the agreed drone was repurposed to spray disinfectants. This was used across various public places covering more than 1000 acres very effectively in a short span of one week's time. That's what tinkering does. Quick, effective and very creative hacks. I'm sure we are all set to spot and nurture human creativity. Spot, synthesize, pinch, observe and tinker. Let's unleash the human creativity and the engineering spirit in each one of you. Thank you.